Transport Secretary has said he is a commuter paying same fares as everyone else despite having the option of using a ministerial car. This morning the Transport Secretary was nowhere to be found as commuters endured a 3.4% back-to-work hike, the biggest annual rise in five years. Many commuters saw their season tickets go up by more than an pound. 100 and research by that UK also found UK passengers spend five times as much as rail users in other EU countries. Chris Grayling told LBC Ziendale that he didn't want to see fares rise because he also relied on the trains to get to work every day. I'm a commuter, I travel into work every day, I pay the same fares as everyone else. I don't want fares to go up. His department wouldn't comment on his use of official cars but guidelines show ministers are permitted to use an official car for official business and for home-to-office journeys within a reasonable distance of London on the understanding that they are using the time to work. This means if Mr Grayling doesn't want to be squashed into a crowded carriage on his journey into the department for transport he has the option of a taxpayer-funded driver as long as he's happy to get some work done on the way. Today there were protests staged at around 40 stations as angry commuters and rail unions railed against the hikes. The transport secretary had been accused of shirking his duty after it was revealed he had set off on an ill-time two-day visit to Qatar. But speaking to LBC Radio from Qatar, Mr. Grayling denied leaving the country to dodge the row over fares, insisting it was important that during parliamentary recess ministers go to other countries where there are business opportunities. The transport secretary said the fare increases were higher than I would wish, but accused Labour of being completely hypocritical on rail fares. Mr Grayling also told LBC he would like to move to the lower CPI measure of inflation, but that he faces obstruction from rail unions which insist on using the RPI measure when negotiating pay rises. He said the government was putting significant sums into rail investment, including the renovation of London Bridge Station and the creation of Crossrail. Mr Grayling said, Something has to pay for that and the question is do we ask the fare payers to pay for part of the cost, the taxpayer generally pays for a lot of it, or do we put all the cost on the taxpayer? The increase is higher than I would wish. I think we need to move to the lower form of inflation. There are two big barriers to that. One is that it involves unpicking long-term contracts and I have started the process of looking at how best we do that. The other is, I'm afraid, the unions and the Labour Party. Despite rumours he will be ditched in a coming reshuffle, Mr Grayling is meeting the Gulf States Prime Minister and Interior and Finance Ministers, alongside his counterpart in transport and the chief executive of Qatar Airways. He said in a radio interview, the fare increase was announced a month ago and I've actually done radio interviews about it and answered questions in the House of Commons. I don't think I've shirked the issue, but I think it's really important we get out and try and win business for Britain. Today, my presence in the country doesn't make any difference, I can make a difference trying to help Britain get more jobs. A DFT spokesperson said, the Secretary of State is currently on a pre-planned visit to Qatar to promote the UK overseas, support British jobs and strengthen the important relationship between the two countries. This trip has been specifically arranged to take place outside of parliamentary time. The Secretary of State has repeatedly answered questions on this issue, ever since fare increases were first announced by the industry in August.